foremost, guys, I want to thank everybody on the phone who's taken the time to join in uh, for, this, for this webinar. I think you'll enjoy it. I also want to thank you for your business and support of the Robbins business as we start up. Uh, it's, you know, it's been uh, a long time coming and uh, we're, we're making good progress and I do appreciate everybody's support here. So without too much um, fanfare, I'm going to introduce uh, Sarah Babinski. Uh, Sarah is a principal designer at AHF Products and she's been designing award-winning floors for more than 30 years. She's worked with uh, virtually every type of flooring and most recently designed uh, our, the products in the new Robbins hardwood line in conjunction with feedback we got from some of our key retailers. The Robbins line's already uh, won an ADEX or Platinum Award for the product HydroGuard and has recently expanded into SPC in our new pro, with our new ProTech collection. And if you haven't seen it, it, we just got our stuff going here on 8-1 and uh, we'll be out to see everybody shortly. Uh, Sarah received a BFA, uh, I think that's kind of like an MBA, in illustration and design from Ringling School of Art and Design in Sarasota, Florida, and was born and raised in the beach community of Sagponac, New York. She says, nature and beach and friends fuel my inspirations, textures and colors found in nature were everything then and now. Uh, I welcome Sarah, and Sarah is a personal friend of mine. I appreciate her, appreciate her taking her time out, and please enjoy Sarah as she walks you through the latest design trends and how they've inspired our Robbins product lineup. Sarah, I'm going to turn it over to you. Good morning and good afternoon. Um, had a couple technical glitches, but I think we're good to go right now. If anybody has any issues, just uh, you know, raise your hand. Um, this presentation should probably take around 45 minutes. We've allowed enough time at the end for some questions, if anybody has any. We've got sales on the line, and um, of course I'm here, and, and we also have Mark Francesca's here from marketing. Um, so this presentation, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, it includes, um, you know, we used to give it many years ago to salespeople, and, and they were like, well, you know, we wanna see products with the trends. So. It's evolved into a, really a product showcase along with the trends. Um, you can see this first slide, we show our family of brands. Uh, you can see the www.robbins.com if you need more information on any of the products that you're gonna see today. And uh, I'm just gonna get right into it. So the key design influences, uh, which really have not changed for me for many years, um, are these five, nature knows best, multi-sensory, truly global, curated style, and wooded areas. The part that does change are the subheadings behind each of those titles. So um, Nature Knows Best, I've included nat natural wonders, beaching it, and season by exposure. And these do change um, you know, as the trends change. And typically I have three, um, three of these, some, some of you might see four. Um, I try to keep it kind of limited, um, you know, but to the point. So Nature Knows Best is essentially about, um, you know, design anything designed um, with an inspiration from nature. And included in this um, trend, I include smooth hardwood, you know, because that was really the beginning of the history of hardwood is, you know, taking it from nature. And, it, you know, at that point in time, there wasn't a lot of, you, you took what you had near you. Um, there was not a lot of uh, what we do today with the wire brushing and the scraping. Um, so I put that, um, this particular uh, product is the Robins Woodland Hills and the Snow Owl color. Um, and you can see the inspiration pictures I have in here. I try to take as many of my own photographs as I can. Uh, you know, we do subscribe to many trend services, uh, but I try to keep it uh, a you know, personal collection of photographs. So if you see someone else's presentation, you're not gonna see the same pictures. Um, but again, like a chair inspired by a flower, a light that was inspired uh, you know, by a bird kind of in an origami fashion. Um, one picture that I've had in this presentation probably for at least five years is, is the lady with the dress and the turkey, just because it's so literal. I mean, it's just a literal impact of color, texture, uh, you know, and how the turkey inspired the design of the dress. But recently I thought, you know, I really should get that updated so this is an updated um, version 
that I pulled out of some trend reports. Um, and again, you can see the influence of the, the fungi and the mushroom, not only on fashion, but also for the sculptural effect that you see on the tree. Um, so th this trend is just tremendous. Um, I mean, there's just so many products and, and so many items that are influenced by nature from a design standpoint. There's a little lag time here between the pictures. So this is nature again, um, beaching it, the coastal theme, which of course is my favorite. Um, you can see the product here, Robin's Nature's Canvas Platinum. Fits in beautifully, uh, you know, for the beach setting, a lake setting. Um, the pictures that have inspired these colors are, you see around here. Um, you know, again, a lot of people with what's going on, um, staycations have become very popular. Uh, so if people aren't at the beach, they want to bring the beach home. Um, you know, ocean blues and aqueous colors uh, are a big influence on this trend. And of course, earthy neutrals seeing a lot of these whitewashed effects like you see on the table in the bottom picture. The next trend, again, nature. Um, this one seasoned by exposure. Uh, Robin's Hydra Guard, you can see that little logo there, which is the ADEX Award, and I'll get into that a little bit more. Um, but this, this trend is really about the weathering effect. You know, anything that happens with uh, rain, wind, um, snow, the things as a homeowner that I hate, um, but from a design standpoint, you, you can get some beautiful aesthetics as metal uh, starts to rust or stones start to wear. You can see the influence on fashion where we have this crushed velvet, um, you know, and it kind of takes on the effect of a stone look with a little bit of iridescence. Um, so this, this trend is um, very popular. And the reason I put the Robbins HydroGuard Craft Brown in there is because it is a wire brush product. And um, you know, a lot of people refer to wire brushing as a, as a weathering effect. And just to touch a little bit more, um, you know, Mike had mentioned that we had gotten an ADEX award uh, for HydroGuard, which is a great selling point, um, you know, as you talk to customers. And this is an award of, ex of design excellence. It's the largest and most prestigious award program for product and project design in the A&D community, and it's based out of Chicago. Um, so we've gotten, you know, a number of these over the years, but it's, it's always um, a nice industry accolade um, to see this. And again, um, a couple more uh, images from HydroGuard that I felt represented season by exposure. Uh, Twilight on the left and Sugar Shack on the right. And then I included the room scene of Sugar Shack so you could see that in um, you know, how it would naturally be installed. The next trend is I call multi-sensory. It's about tac tactility, contrast, um, metal smithing, and juxtaposition. Uh, from a tactility contrast standpoint, it's all about elemental uh, roughness right now and a lot of raw design. Um, I like to say that textures become the new color we always know that color is, a, is probably one of the top selling features when a customer comes into a store for anything. Um, but now texture has really taken the forefront. Um, I just saw a trend report where they say texture is in vogue. Um, so it's definitely coming to the forefront. Um, and you can see in this particular picture is a product, uh, the Robbins ProTech Rigid Core Flooring which was just introduced in August. Then we can touch on that a little bit more as we get to the end, but many people may have not seen that. So this tactile contrast is not only to the touch, but it can also be visually. So you can see to the left, they put in a larger, uh, a blown up example of that particular product. There were two rustic skews in that collection because um, although rustic's losing a little bit of favor, it's still a very strong category. And here's another image, that's the second skew that has the rustic nature to it called Woodcrest. You can see the, um, the saw marks and um, the wire brush. And you know, with the technology of uh, print, it's just this, the realism. There's another picture as we get along into this presentation and the realism is it just looks exactly like wood. So the next slide, again, another picture. Um, this is actually Scrape, a Scrape solid product in the Robbins collection. Um, Scrape fits perfectly into this tact tactility contrast trend. And we have a hickory here. 
You don't see much of the texture, unfortunately, um, but that is a scrape product. And then metal smithing. I mean, this is a trend that we don't really, you know, play in, but we need to be aware of it because we do, uh, you know, our floors are commonly put into kitchens and as we get into these waterproof categories into the bath. And this is where you see a lot of um, interesting things around um, metal. Um, and especially now, you know, as we're dealing with this COVID, you're going to start to see a lot of copper um, because of its antibacterial, antimicrobial uh, properties, as well as, um, you know, as they get into textiles and uh, bathroom fixtures. And you're going to see some textiles with uh, metals that are woven into it again uh, for this microbial um, advantage. Um, I'm also seeing uh, rust, rust looks, uh, wrought iron and aged um, tins. Uh, they're starting to emerge as a trend because they're so, again, raw and again, that word I used before, elemental. Um, brass is also starting to show up. Um, it's, it's showing up on the fashion runway and also in jewelry. Um, but it's funny because it's been very matte, you know, like a lot of our floors. And right now it's becoming uh, a trend as polished, highly polished. So that could be the beginning of a tick up in gloss level. Um, the next trend is again sensory and it's juxtaposition. And the definition of juxtaposition is two or more things um, being seen or placed close to each other with contrasting and interesting effects. Um, you can see on this slide, uh, you know, the, the horns with the crystals, which is totally unexpected, um, a mix of ceramic and straw. Um, you know, I always use the nails to demonstrate gloss differential because when you have gloss differential, uh, the matte finishes tend to be a little bit more casual. And when you get into the higher gloss, they become a little bit more traditional and a little bit more formal. And then for the gearheads in the audience, I included this motorcycle. Um, it's called the Green Falcon. It's got a bamboo upper body um, that's much lighter than fiberglass. But again, um, you know, the juxtaposition is kind of an unexpected thing, um, you know, when you're looking at anything that's automotive. And then truly global. Now here we have four bullet points. Um, more is more, less is less, nature watch and cultural finds. And more is more is just about maximalism, um, which has really become in, in the design community, kind of a backlash to minimalism, because um, minimalism has been so strong and it, it continues to be strong, but there are people, you know, out there that want to be, be bold or go home. Um, so you can see these pictures of, you know, the textiles market. I go to high, the High Point Furniture Market, and of course, the last visit there was last fall in um, 2019. Um, but a lot of bold, um, you know, bright fabrics, especially in the dinnerware collection. Um, you can see this, uh, the green, the wood down below the side table, kind of, a, you know, a citrus, kind of a neon color. Um, and, you know, a lot of this you're starting, you know, you still see on the fashion runways. And then less is less. I wish I could put those two slides next to each other because it's kind of like the first one hurts your eyes and this one's very soothing. Um, but Robin's, um, you know, the platinum nature's canvas here fits in beautifully to this, fits into those um, subdued uh, colors that we're seeing. Um, pigmented minimalism with very warm muted tones and typically matte. Um, you can see that blush tone on the upper left, uh, which is kind of a, a new influence, because, you know, with the addition of a little bit of color into this gray and beige category. And then we get into Nature Watch. Um, just before I came in here to give this presentation, I had received, um, I got an email from, I think it was uh, Nordstrom, and they're featuring all types of um, skin looks and fashion for the fall. Um, every year I think that's going to stop or diminish, and every year it keeps coming back stronger. Um, and I think for, for 2021, you're going to see a lot of um, skin effects. Again, you can see a lot of these pictures I took at high point, uh, bone effects, sometimes real bone, sometimes a synthetic bone, uh, fur, and also faux fur. Um, to the bottom right, you can see the chagrin, which was, um, you know, an animal skin, which was used for that, that buffet table. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's interesting to watch. And sometimes, you know, when I include these pictures, 
the picture you see on the left of the um, the minimalist gray with rustic directions, you know, it doesn't necessarily apply to anything related to this trend, except for the fact it has the horse picture in there. So there's times when we take these trends and we actually, um, you know, I send them to the studio, the photo studio, and ask them to incorporate something. So in this case, they incorporated um, the horse poster, and, and I have another example of that right here. You can see just, you know, a touch of kind of an exotic flair with that side table. Um, again, this trend is, is just really exploding as we go into next year. And then the next slide is just about cultural finds. And cultural finds, you know, they're in America too. I mean, you know, as you move around America geographically, you start to see different looks. I have a, the room scene in here, which features, again, the Nature's Canvas Platinum. Looks has a little bit of a Southwestern feel to it. Um, but, uh, you know, again, you know, taking all these cultural finds and, you know, applying them to what we do, the pictures of the, um, the wood type, there's a coconut, a pressed coconut wood, there's a cinnamon wood here on that one little table. Um, it's just a, a very big influence um, everywhere, you know, taking some of these finds either from your travels or, um, you know, picking them up online or in a store. Um, it's just some really interesting effects and um, some cool textures. And then curated style. Um, old is original, pattern play, and deconstructive. And old is original is another one of my favorite trends. Um, you know, it could be considered nostalgia, which is really big right now, or some people call it nostalgia because you can take a mix of um, old and new. Um, it's also sometimes referred to as aesthetic clutter, which I appreciate because that's me. I've got a lot of aesthetic clutter. Um, nobody can call me a hoarder, I'm just aesthetic clutter. Um, so reassuring earth tones, um, you know, calming hues, kind of nostalgic connections to objects and patterns. And on the left, um, you know, we have the Robbins Hydra Guard again, not necessarily because old is original, but you can see we've added those old uh, steam trunks in there. Again, this was sent to the studio for the photography. Um, you know, and I, I asked them to include something that's, that looks like a find, you know, was it, you know, maybe from a flea market or from Goodwill. Um, so it's just fun to try to incorporate um, different pieces of these trends. Um, up in the upper right, I had somebody say, what is that? And, you know, we had a little discussion about that. It's actually a vault at High Point, because so many of the banks in High Point, North Carolina have closed and they've been um, reinvented into stores for the furniture industry. And they take these safe deposit vaults and um, dress them up. You know, it's a place where you can hold a meeting or you can look at new products. Um, so I, I took that picture on one of the walls. Um, you know, and then you see the camper down there. I think everybody's seen RVing. Uh, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine last night and I said, are you going camping this weekend? He said, no, it's too crowded. So everybody's out camping and RVing. Uh, macrame is making a comeback. You know, we have the Edison type lights um, that have become very popular. Um, so, you know, this is, this is kind of a, a cool trend. And then pattern play. Um, you know, I, I mentioned it earlier, just bold patterns. Um, many are hand painted. Um, you can see the effects, the, the picture with all the little chips on it. That's a company that does digital printing. I mean, you know, digital printing has opened up so many different options. Um, and of course, anything that's hand painted is also uh, beautiful. You know, kind of what we call like an, an eclectic collage of, of different techniques. And then I added this um, just because when I think of pattern play, I don't think of um, five inch or seven inch, I think of random width. So this is Robin's um, Nature's Canvas in the silver collection. We have an, a hickory uh, natural and also a dipped in honey color. And I added this picture because, you know, hickory, it doesn't get sorted. It's got a lot of, uh, you know, interesting graining, interesting color. And you can see the pattern play effect um, here, although it's, you know, it's not a printed, uh, floral, but it's definitely has pattern play. So this fits beautifully into this trend. 
And then deconstructed, this is all about, you know, fragmented things, you know, showing things differently. Um, the dinnerware isn't just silver, it has a moire effect. You know, the headboard on the bed isn't just flat, it has cross-cut lumber on it. Um, the carpet isn't flat, it has a fringed effect on it. The couch is actually brand new, um, but it doesn't look brand new because it's been sanded and the textile's been kind of roughed up. Um, but again, it's part of that, that, that look that a lot of people um, almost aspire to now. And then wooded areas, which of course affects us in a big way. Um, the trends here are look-alike, wood-ingrained, and artisan frontier. And the first slide is, is what I call look-alike, or it's not wood, because there's so many influences um, that relate to wood that are not literally wood. You see wood textiles, you see wood ceramics. I think these side tables are really interesting with the wood printed on them. Um, you know, the candles with the wood. On, on the right, I took this picture um, actually when I was developing um, the Nature's Canvas collection, we went to Cambodia because it comes out of our Cambodia plant. And um, I took a walk near our hotel and it just made me laugh because I saw the shower. Uh, the hotel was actually on the beach, but they had the shower that they made to look like a tree. Not too convincing, but again, you know, it's not wood. Made to look like wood, but it's not wood. Um, also in this picture, again, Robin's Protect, um, because although it looks like wood, it's, it's really not wood, it's just a look-alike. And again, two more um, from the Robbins Protect. And if this doesn't look like real wood, I don't know what does. Um, it's very convincing. You know, again, the print technology has made so many advancements over the year um, and the embossing technology. I just, I think they're beautiful. And just driving home, you know, the waterproof um, quality of these floors out of our, um, one of our interiors. And wood and grain is a little bit um, of an educational slide uh, for some people who don't completely understand veneers. Um, on the left, I just wanted to demonstrate a rotary uh, veneer. And on the right, we have a slice sawn veneer. Um, sawn, they cut the log into thick blanks and they set it on the edge. Um, it typically can have the lowest yield for lumber and also the highest cost. Um, sliced veneers, are cut horizontally, um, and they're usually around um, two millimeter veneers or less. And as you get thicker, it would be sawn. Um, rotary veneers have started to kind of fall out of favor, um, although we still see a lot of it being used in the builder market. And in some cases, depending on the species, you can't tell if it's rotary. It's not as obvious, such as um, walnut, uh, maple, sometimes hickory. Um, but for oak, it's, uh, it's pretty imperative. If you want the look, of a solid hardwood floor, but you need engineered, um, you, you typically would want to go with something that's um, sliced as opposed to rotary. And then Artisan Frontier, this is all about what can we do with wood? You know, I, I take, again, I take these pictures at the furniture show um, just to look for different embossing textures, to look at different paint treatments that would, again, be applicable to hardwood or to SPC. Um, there's a small picture there of a burl. Um, burls have really come to the forefront in furniture. It's kind of an expensive proposition, um, you know, for flooring, and also they tend to be very busy, so it's not necessarily something that we would see on the floor, um, but you definitely could see it in the furniture industry um, and, and in cabinets. It's also fun to look at, uh, you know, like I said, these different paint treat treatments of the black wash, distressing, um, look at some different techniques of scraping, which is always interesting. Um, and then I have the Robbins Rustic Directions um, hickory down in the, on the left side in uh, the color Southern Charm. And then the money of color, um, what's trending now? And I have whites, grays, honey naturals, and flax and browns. The white, uh, you know, this is really a kind of a summer tone, um, but as we look at, you know, this year into fall and into 2021, um, this is gonna continue to be very strong. I mean, I don't see this going away for quite some time. 
uh, it kind of morphs into different hues. It can be a, a white, it can be kind of a parchment, a, a, you know, a taupe colored white, um, a creamy white. Um, but again, it's, it's just a beautiful color. Um, and we're, we're, you know, we see it across all market segments. Then I have additional um, pictures just, again, for inspiration. I mean, I literally take these to the plant, you know, to help develop different textures. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to see what all the artisans do on, um, for furniture design. You can see the variation. It's just amazing. And then grays, um, you know, how many years ago did this pop onto the scene? I say gray is a new gun stock, um, but it's become a very classic uh, color. You know, it's really almost traditional now. Um, you can see some of these pictures. I always like to include a fashion picture because a lot of this starts on the fashion runways. Um, you know, I was going through this presentation with Mike and he's like, what's that thing on the right hand side? It's actually a bedspread that looks like stone, looks like tumbled stone, um, which is kind of cool. Um, but again, you know, gray is just everywhere. Um, it's, it's a, great neutral um, and right now it's going towards kind of a taupe color with a little bit of warmth added to it as we move into 2021. And again more supporting pictures you can see the warm hopefully if you see this on your screen you can see the warm tones that are starting to come through on the gray. Um, I took that shell picture um, because I love to look at shells to see the color combinations, because you could literally build a room um, around a shell when you look at the different colors. So I, I like the way the gray and the cream color work together on that shell. Um, again, just kind of fell into place with all these furniture colors. And then warmth often um, natural. I mean, this was a, a huge trend that we applied towards uh, nature's canvas, that entire collection, very, you know, these very warm hues, um, some, you know, orange, slightly orange undertones without being a gunstock or a butterscotch. Um, it says, you know, the floor, the floors embrace a warmth of color. I mean, we've seen that everywhere. It's, and again, it's in fashion. Um, you know, I always think of straw, uh, bamboo, rattan, um, beach grass, even be dried beach grass, um, you know, has this type of hue to it. And again, just more supporting pictures. Um, it, it's also interesting to look at the color of shells. Um, I collect shells and I collect shells from the Northeast and I collect shells from the um, Caribbean and I have a bag of each and you hold them together and they're both um, very much on trend, but the shells from the Northeast tend to be, you know, gray and uh, cream colored and very neutral. And then when you hold it up to the um, Caribbean shells, it's the same thing except you see much more warmth and a lot more pink. Um, so it's sort of, it was funny when I, I noticed that, it's just interesting to see the difference between um, the shells and again, how they influence these trends. And this is, um, I'm gonna call this an emerging trend, um, you know, cause we've kind of moved away from a lot of the darker browns. We don't see, um, I don't know, like I had some dark colors, Bear Mountain and you know, things like that, that were really trending for such a long time. Um, and, and, you know, they're still popular, but they're not as popular as those light tones. Um, so I think as we move into, even into uh, 2023, we're going to see dark colors with a warmth underneath. Uh, a lot of my trend reports are calling it a wild mushroom. Um, and again, it's kind of a, a countermeasure to the recent dominant blonde woods um, that have been seen uh, across markets and you know, even in uh, the, some of the reports I got from 2020 Maison Auger out of Europe, um, they showed a lot of blackened finishes on woods. And I just got a trend report the other day um, how black and, you know, dark navies and greens are going to be really popular for the kitchen. Um, so I do think we're going to start to see this um, flip over to some of these more uh, chocolatey warm browns. And I mean, again, it's right on trend, the Robins Gardens Path. Um, I, I pulled that color out just because it's, it's, you know, heading that way. So it's kind of, um, this will be interesting to see how it turns out, but I think you will start seeing more of these colors. 
And this is just, the uh, next couple of slides are kind of uh, more of like uh, fun design slides, uh, fads, trends, and principles, just to touch on these briefly. Um, a lot of people play with fads um, and are seduced by fads. I'm not gonna read through each one of these, but it's, it's kind of a, a fun exercise to do with your team if you ever had the time. Um, trends, we, we work with trends, they take a little bit longer. Sometimes they fade away and become a principle. Um, they're a need and not a want. And a lot of people are, are ignorant of trends. And then principles are, are really long-term, um, genuine and timeless. And what comes to my mind is gunstock and butterscotch. Um, I've been working on hardwood for about 20 years and um, you know we still have our gunstock and our butterscotch hanging around. Um, and a lot of people are resistant to principles because they find them boring. Um, so it's sort of interesting. Now the next slide, I, I polled some of our people um, say, you know, what do you think? I mean, this is a fun exercise, again, for either seasoned people in the flooring industry or for, for people who are new because they might see it a little bit different. Um, but, you know, we just came up with some, you, you play with fads, like what's, what's been a fad in the flooring industry? Um, really some bright accent colors. I mean, many, many years ago, we had those on the commercial side. Um, you know, at one point we had wine barrel flooring. A lot of people were into that. That's fallen by the wayside. Um, tropical exotics. We have gotten rid of all of our tropical exotics. We, it's very rare we get requests. Um, I had a customer ask me to take uh, white oak not too long ago and make it look like, um, you know, Jatoba or Brazilian cherry. Um, so, so there's still a little bit of a desire for it, but really not that strong, you know, as it was maybe seven or eight years ago. Um, piano finish, um, you know, that used to be on our, you know, laminate products was a 90 on a scale of one to 100. Um, now we're looking at any type of gloss level of 10, eight to 10, typically in the plant. Um, you know, wood on the walls, huge. I mean, you, that was everywhere. You know, we were into it. You just don't hear a lot about it anymore. And floral design. Um, I mean, when, when I started in the flooring industry design, any floral design was trending and you know you just don't see that anymore um, and work with trends um, you know waterproof flooring scraped wire brush looks um, you know white oak low gloss and then principles like I'd mentioned gunstock butterscotch uh, cinnamon the grays have become will become a principle most likely and probably the dark browns will continue to be a principle um, I think a solid hardwood is being a principle um, smooth, um, you know, your old legacy sizes of 2.25 and 3.25, um, straight laid, none of that, you know, random width, and, um, you know, red oak will always be around, and medium to high gloss is still popular. So, and then, you know, who, who knew with SBC that vinyl flooring would make a resurgence? Um, so, you, you know, again, it's a fun exercise, something to add to and take out, um, but yeah, it's sort of interesting to follow. Puts it all in perspective. Um, this particular slide is just a four box um, related to color, surface texture, size, and structure, species and cut. Um, really nothing I haven't talked about, uh, you know, for, from a color standpoint, minimalism um, that's influenced by Scandinavian and Japanese design. Uh, coastal hues um, have become very important. The soft warm neutrals that I mentioned, and then you know gray, the popularity of gray. From a surface and texture standpoint, ultra low gloss, I call it a nano gloss. Uh, wire brushing is really um, reigning strong right now, um, you know, across markets. And less aggressive textures, we've really pulled back on a lot of our scrape textures, um, and also some of our wire brush textures. Um, size and structure, wider width, longer length, which is what you've got with Nature's Canvas. Um, you know, five inches become the new traditional for hardwood. And then we have different, uh, you know, structures, the way that we build these things out with, you know, HDF or MDF and of course SBC, which has really um, hit the market by storm. And anything waterproof is an added benefit, whether it be on the SBC side or for wood. Um, species and cut, um, you know, white oak. It's, it's really a white oak world right now. Um, and it's the sliced and sawn face that I had talked about. And, and like I mentioned, rotary cuts are still appropriate, but mostly for opening price points. Um, and lumber's become cleaner. You know, people 
there was a time when people wanted to see a lot of knots and mineral streaks, um, and, and we're kind of pulling back on that. The Midwest and Southwest are the exceptions. Um, and a lot of people say to me, what, you know, what do you use, um, you know, for design inspiration? Um, so I've just put here the magazines, domestic magazines, and some of the international magazines that we subscribe to. Um, electronic subscriptions, some of which cost money, uh, but many are free to you. Uh, Stacy Garcia does a, a color crush, um, which is really interesting. She's an interior designer who's um, one of my favorites. Um, Sherwin Williams does Stir. Uh, my favorite show to attend for what I do is the High Point Furniture Market. Um, and of course, there's many others. Um, New York Times is always interesting because you can see, you know, really what's happening in, in real time in some of the metropolitan areas. And then um, Google Alerts um, are, are really interesting to get. Um, externally, uh, PPG is one of our suppliers. They give me a, a yearly trend presentation. Same with um, Axo Nobel. They're also one of our uh, suppliers and they're very global. Uh, voice of customer. Um, you know, Mike and I had talked about that. that very important uh, for my job is to, you know, hear what the customers want, what's changing uh, geographically, because that does happen. Um, and then we, you know, we talked to builder, we talked to independent retail, and then some um, big box people. Um, internally, you know, I'm always reaching out to our R&D folks because they're on some cutting edge technology. Um, product management always hears things from the sales force. Um, and then working directly with our sales force is always interesting because again, um, you know, I can't be across the US all the time and things change geographically. So it's good to hear from them. And then Mike asked me to add this slide. Um, we did the sales ranking for the Nature's Canvas and uh, Barley Harps, and he, he can talk more of that, about that when we end, is uh, number one by far. And he, he thinks it's because of the name, but I think it's because of the color. So it's kind of a, a pretty, very neutral pattern um, that's doing really well. And that concludes the presentation, so thank you. And we have some time uh, for questions, if anybody has any. Yeah, Mike, if you want to um, say any ending comments on your end, but if anyone does have a question, um, you can either um, submit in the um, chat or um, we can also um, kind of open up if you would like as well. Um, just kind of raise your hand and, and we're happy to answer any questions you have. Yes, yeah, Sarah, thank you very much. Very informative, and uh, I really enjoy that. You, you know, I've told you this before, I really enjoy that the presentation. And I'm not a big like design guy by any means, uh, but I, I find that interesting and, and really informative in terms of what, what, what the trends are, colors are, why you pick the things you do. Uh, I did learn an interesting fact while I'm in Washington State this week, and 70% um, of the, I think it's the United States hops for you know, what is the barley and hops, and that's why I bring this up, is actually made, they're grown here in Washington State. So it kind of explains why their beer is pretty good out here. And uh, it's, it's very interesting that that's uh, our number one seller. So uh, that's why I asked Sarah to put it in. It's, it's selling probably two to three times as much as any other pattern. So, but with that guys, I'll, I'll open it up to questions to Sarah, uh, me about Robbins, uh, anything you guys have on your mind and we can, uh, or we can conclude and give you back 15 minutes of your day. Okay, well, I don't see any questions, uh, Madison and Francesca. So with that, I'm gonna, conclude the presentation and thank everybody for attending and we'll be doing some other ones of these as we um, as we go on um, you know our way and we basically will try to keep you guys informed of what's happening out there so thank you again yeah thank you thank you